All right, Sabah Feria, Sabah, yeah, we'll start over again. And there, now, what, what we've done in the previous video, we talked about how to do registration. But in this video, I'm going to show you how we actually do log in using the data set that we've created before. Now, remember, we have a table, this user table. If you click on it and show data, we have some records in there. We have some username and passwords in here. And we have a form, we have a page called login. In this login, we will have a username and a password. When you click on the login, we need to run a query against that table, and then that a select a statement, and then will give us back a result. Now, in the previous video, we talked about creating this data set, and I showed you how we add query to this data set. Now, you can do the same thing here. You can add different queries to this. And how do you add a query? You just simply Click on this, add, and then you click on uh, query. And we want to use the select a statement because we're expecting to receive something back. Here you can do, uh, so we're going to click on next. And we're going to say, give me a record, one row or multiple row. This one will give you like a summary. We're not going to use that one. Okay, we will use this one, select statement. You can click on next, and then you can use what we call the query builder if you want. The query builder makes it easier for you to design your database, uh, your query, instead of actually having to remember this select a statement or insert statement or update statement or delete statement. You can just simply use the query builder to do that. Now, we want to run a query and we want to pass a parameter to it. That means we want to pass a value to it. How do you pass a value to it? This is the field that I am want to query the user by. So it's called username. Okay, so that is the username. So I can do here, do you see that filter username here? I can say <coughs> username equal at username. When you say at, we're actually passing a parameter to this value. Okay, so if you click OK, hit enter, what happens, your, your uh, select a statement changes. Now say select all these fields. Uh, where username, this field, username, equal to the value that you're going to pass. So you can test your query to make sure it works. You can do execute query. Now it's asking you for that value, the parameter value. So if I type in AAA, I know it doesn't exist. It will give me nothing here, all right? No value. But if I say execute query and I type in ABC, there is a record with ABCs, and hit OK then I actually will get some value back. You get that? So that's what we're gonna use in our uh, program. Now you can add, map, pass multiple value. If you wanna put that, like for also the password, you can put equal, same thing with the password in here. All right, I'm gonna do it a little bit differently. When you click on okay, now you say, okay, here's my query, click on next. Now don't check this one, this is important. That will give you a problem. Okay, so it says, I don't want to fill data. I actually want to return data table. Okay, there's something called data table adapter. So I'm going to say, no, don't do that. And hit, click on next. Okay, generate all these things. Okay, click on finish. Okay, let me make sure that we give it a name. Is there a name to it? Okay, no. Okay, click on next, next. Next, and then you click on finish. Okay. Here is the name of it. Do you see that? If you scroll down, get data by one. I'm not going to, you can leave it as get data by one, or you can say get users. All right. So you can say find user. <coughs> find user. And you click on finish. Now, what happens, it actually, actually created that query for me, and it's called find user. Now, we want to use this query like we used it last time in our code. Now, you need to build your, you need to build, uh, you need to build your project in order to see this, what we, the changes that we made in this data set. So you go in here and you say rebuild solution or build solution, same thing, okay? Rebuild the solution so we have no error, we're done. Now I go back to my login page that I've created. In the login page, I have these two fields. One is called txt user, and one of them is called txt uh, 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 pass. So if I double click on the login, uh, here is my code. Now the first thing you need to do, like we did in the previous video, you need to add the data set 
that we've created in here. So I say using data set one table adapters. I'm using the table adapters that are in the data set. All right, that's the first thing you need to do. If you don't do that, you'll get errors. All right, the next thing we want to do here is my code. The second, I already have some of this code, so I'll just comment it. I'm commenting. So what we have is that we create the we uh, we create the object, the table adapter. The table adapter is the one that allow me to interact with that table. All right, I'm going fast here because I already explained this in the previous video. All right. So in now what we want is that we want to execute the query. Now how do I execute the query? I'll just show you. You say data set user table data table. We have a data table. We're creating a data table because the result is going to come back to me as a table with all the columns in it. So it says the data set user table. I want to create a new object. It's called user. That's the re result set. That's what I'm going to get back. What we're going to do is that we're going to call the function that we just created. Remember what was that function? What did we call it? Do you remember? Find user, right? You don't want to talk. That's okay. So we have find user, right? So find user, and then you pass to it a value. What value do you want to pass to it? It's expecting you to pass a string. It's called username. So the value that you pass should come from the text field that we have. We have a text field in here, so I'm going to say txt uh, user dot text. Okay. And semicolon and text is capital T. All right. Now you need to check. Do I have? This is my. This is the table. This is the table that I get back. Is the table? Does the table have actually? Uh, data in it. How do you know if it has data? You check is the row counts. There is something called inside that table. There's something called user dot rows dot count. Okay, I'll just show you so you understand. Okay, so if I type in user dot rows, you see that, and then dot count. This will give me how many records I got back. Now there are possibilities here. Either I have one record or more, depending on the value that I pass, or what do I have? No records, that means not found. So if it's, if it's equal to zero, that means it's not found. Now you can have also it's equal to, uh, so I, I may, we have this label called level output. I would say if it's not found, I will make it txt uh, not found. If it is found, we'll say it's found. Later on, I'll show you how to change this sessions and from there we can go to make it better all right now how do we we need to check the password so we already have a password here so again say here we have an or statement you can say or how do you get the value from uh from this record it's a it's a table all right it's an array so i can say user dot zero the first record that i'm gonna got, get tx we have fields one of the fields remember what was it user password you see that it give me the name of the fields that i have in the table user password if it is not equal to the txt pass that i have the user entered that uh, txt uh, what do you call it pass no Pass dot text. So if it if I didn't find any record or the passwords do not match what exists in the database, then we say record not found. Otherwise, we say record found. All right. Now what we can do, we can check we have records in the database. Remember, we have here this table. We'll check just to test it. We'll say show table data. We have one ABC with one, two, three as a record. All right. So what I'm going to do in here, I'm going to run it and test it and see if it works. Uh, okay, we need to be on that login page. We don't have the log. Okay, we are in the login page. Do you see that? Now, obviously, you can do this better than this. So I have ABC and I have one, two, three. Now, if I do log in, I should say it says found. Now, if I type in ABC and I type in AAA for the password and I do the not found. Yeah. 
Okay, so that actually works, all right? It works. Okay, so we, we got this to work. Uh, I'm, hold on. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is that if this was a valid password and a valid username, we wanted to send it to another page, but we have to do something is more important. Okay, and that is we need to create what we call a session. A session is that when you log in, like any, like if you if you if you sign in into a bank or any website, when you do sign in, you want it to stay logged in as long as you're working. But after a while, that session disappears. So the session is a way to make sure that a user stays logged in for a while as long as they're working. If they leave or they close the computer, that session uh, disappears. Okay, it's so for security uh, reasons. So what we're going to do, we're going to go back to that website. Let's stop running here. All right, and then let's go back to the login page. All right, in the login page, in that button, we know that if we found it or not. So if we found that user, what should we do? We need to do something different. We need to say, for example, session. <clears throat> you see that session? This object already exists. And in this session, we're gonna to say, uh, username. Equal to what? Equal to the username that we created, which is txt uh, equal to uh, txt dot user dot text. Okay. This guarantees that it is already in the session. So in the next page, I can check this session to see if that user already logged in or not. So when I put that value in this session, it tells me that, oh, this user is valid and it's already logged in. Now what I can do, I can say response, like we did last time. And then what do we do? We say redirect. Where do we wanna redirect him to? To whatever page that we wanted to send him to as my main page. So for example, just to show you, I have a page here called, uh, uh, let's say index.html. Let's assume that index.html is my main page. So I can type in index, if we go back here, I can type in the name of the page that I wanted to go to. So I say index dot HTML. All right. All right. If I can type. All right, okay, so that's what's gonna happen. Now, if the session, it will put this value in the session and it does, it send me to the main page. Now, this main page should be your main page and your website, whatever what main, main page you need to go to. So now if I run this, notice what's gonna happen. I will do AAA, it doesn't exist, it stays here. Now, if I do ABC and one, two, three, it should take me to, it says found, and it would take me to the main page. So that guarantees that we have a secure, oh, not a secure, but at least we're checking the users against the database. All right, I'm gonna stop in this page, on this, uh, this uh, video. I'll show you in the next video how you validate, make sure that when you log in, when you go to a page, that the user is already in there, all right?